Are you ready to be stunned? We've got groundbreaking evidence suggesting that the long-awaited rapture is set to happen in 2024. Yes, you heard it right. The signs are all pointing toward this monumental event, and you won't believe what, what we've uncovered. So let's dive into this video today to find out. As we explore this astonishing revelation together, prepare to be shocked and intrigued. You won't want to miss it. Here we begin. Some Christians, especially those in America, believe in the rapture. They believe that at the end of time, all dead Christians will come back to life. They will join living Christians, and together they will meet Jesus in the sky. This idea comes from a letter in the Bible, 1 Thessalonians, which uses a Greek word meaning to snatch away or to seize. This belief is part of a specific end times perspective called dispensational premillennialism, which views certain parts of the Bible as still waiting to happen. The idea of the rapture as it's understood today is pretty new, starting around the 1830s. Conservative Christian thinkers in the United States mostly talk about it. Sometimes people use the word rapture to talk about getting really close to God or going to heaven. Different Christians have different ideas about when exactly the rapture will happen and how it fits with Jesus coming back. Some think the rapture will happen before a period of tough times called the tribulation, followed by Jesus coming back to set up a thousand-year kingdom. This idea started in the 1830s with the work of a man named John Nelson Darby. So it's the most popular view among Christians who believe in the rapture today, but not everyone agrees. Some say the rapture will happen after the tribulation, the timing of the rapture. Different people have different ideas about when the rapture will happen. Some think that a passage in the Bible, Matthew 24, 37, 40, talks about the rapture. They see similarities between this passage and other texts describing the rapture, suggesting that it will happen when Jesus returns. Others say Matthew 24 doesn't mention the rapture at all and that there are big differences between it and other passages that do talk about the rapture, like 1 Thessalonians 4, 13-18. These two passages are the main ones people look at when discussing when the rapture will happen. In some views of Christianity called the millennial and post-millennial, there's no difference in when the rapture and the second coming of Jesus will happen. They believe that the rapture described in 1 Thessalonians 4, 1, 5, 17 will be the same event as Jesus coming back, as described in Matthew 24, 2, 9, 31, after a symbolic period called the millennium in another view called premillennialism. The rapture will happen before a thousand-year kingdom on earth. This view has different ideas about when exactly the rapture will happen. Some say it will happen before a time of trouble called the tribulation, while others have different ideas. Pre-tribulation rapture view. The first idea about the rapture is called the pre-tribulation rapture. This view has a lot of support from the Bible. It says the rapture will happen before the tribulation starts. There are some reasons why people believe this view is correct. First, if we look at the Bible, we see that the rapture described in 1 Thessalonians 4. 13, 18 happens just before the events described in 2. 3, these verses talk about how the day of the Lord will come suddenly like a thief in the night. The day of the Lord includes the tribulation, which starts with peace and safety. This tells us that the rapture happens before the tribulation. Also 1 Thessalonians 5. 4 says the day of the Lord comes like a thief, but believers won't be surprised by it because we are not in darkness. This means that believers won't be surprised when the day of the Lord suddenly happens, but non-believers will be surprised. This helps us understand that the rapture happens before the tribulation. Second, two important verses tell us believers will be protected from tribulation. One of these verses is one which says believers are waiting for Jesus to come and rescue us from the wrath to come. Throughout the Old Testament, the day of the Lord is when God pours out His wrath. So the wrath to come refers to the tribulation. This verse shows us that believers won't be living during the tribulation. Another strong verse that supports the idea that believers won't be living in the tribulation is Revelation 3, 10. This verse says that believers will be kept from the hour of testing, which is about to come upon the whole world to test those who live on the earth. 
The hour of testing refers to the tribulation, which is described as a time of testing for everyone on earth. Jesus promises believers that he will keep them out of the tribulation. A third reason to believe in a pre-tribulation rapture is that the church is not mentioned during the tribulation described in Revelation 6. 19. Revelation 1, 4, 11 and Revelation 2, 3 mention the church several times, but not in chapter 6, 19. Then it's mentioned again in Revelation 2, 16, which is about the eternal heaven. This suggests that the church won't be present during the tribulation. However, this doesn't mean that people won't become believers during the tribulation. Revelation teaches that people will be saved during this time, but won't be part of the church. They will be like the believers in the Old Testament who didn't have the Holy Spirit living inside them. So the pre-tribulation rapture is believed to be true. Because one, it happens before the day of the Lord. Two, believers are protected from the tribulation. And three, the church is not mentioned during the tribulation. Mid-tribulation rapture view. The second viewpoint about the rapture is called the mid-tribulation rapture view. According to this view, the rapture will happen in the middle of the tribulation period. People who hold this view often interpret the two witnesses mentioned in Revelation 11 as symbolizing raptured believers. These two witnesses are believed to represent all believers in the church age. Revelation 11, 3 talks about these two witnesses having authority and prophesying for 1,260 days. Mid-tribulationists interpret their death and resurrection as symbolic of the church being raptured. The idea is that when these witnesses ascend into heaven, it represents the church's rapture. This interpretation is important for mid-tribulationists because they connect it to the seventh trumpet mentioned in Revelation double one fifteen. They also link it to passages like 1 Corinthians 1, 5, 52, and 16, which refer to a trumpet in the tribulation context. However, there are some serious problems with the mid-tribulation rapture view. One major issue is the misunderstanding of God's wrath during the tribulation. Mid-tribulationists do not believe that the first part of the tribulation involves God's wrath upon the earth. They argue that God's wrath begins to be poured out in the middle of the tribulation. However, this contradicts passages like Zechariah 11, which describes the false shepherd, the Antichrist, and the judgment upon Israel. The wrath of God is seen at the very beginning of the tribulation, when the Antichrist makes a deceptive peace treaty with Israel. Additionally, the mid-tribulation view conflicts with the concept of the abomination of desolation mentioned in Daniel 9, 27 and Matthew 24, 15, which occurs in the middle of the tribulation. For this event to happen, the Antichrist must already be in control, indicating that God's wrath is already being poured out. The connection between the wrath of God and the day of the Lord in one further supports the idea that God's wrath is present throughout the entire tribulation period. The second issue with the mid-tribulation rapture view is that it interprets Revelation 11, 3.13 symbolically rather than literally. When someone interprets scripture figuratively, they can give various meanings to the passage based on their own ideas. In this case, mid-tribulationists believe that the two witnesses mentioned in Revelation 11 symbolize the church. They argue that the two witnesses ascending into heaven in verse 12 symbolize the rapture happening in the middle of the tribulation. However, this interpretation ignores the passage's literal meaning. John Walvoord suggests that the two witnesses represent the living church and the resurrected saints at the time of the rapture. But this conclusion is reached through a non-literal interpretation of the text. Moreover, the passage states that the two witnesses will be killed during the tribulation. This raises the question, are we supposed to believe that all believers will be martyred and resurrected during the tribulation? It seems contradictory to think that the saints would die and then be raptured during the tribulation. Thirdly, mid-tribulationists misunderstand the significance of the last trumpet mentioned in 1 Corinthians 1, 5, 52. They believe that the seventh trumpet in Revelation, double 1, 15, is the same as the last trumpet in 1 Corinthians 1, 5, 52 and the trumpet in 16. However, this interpretation overlooks the fact that another trumpet is mentioned at the second coming of Christ in Matthew 2, 4, 3, 0, 31. The mid-tribulational rapture view is rejected because it won. 
misunderstands God's wrath in the tribulation too, interprets Revelation 11 symbolically and 3, misinterprets the significance of the last trumpet in 1 Corinthians 1552, pre-wrath tribulation rapture view. So the third perspective on the rapture's timing is known as the pre-wrath tribulation rapture view. According to this view, the rapture will occur between the middle and the end of the tribulation, specifically when God's wrath is unleashed on the earth at the sounding of the seventh trumpet. Revelation double one fifteen. In essence, this view suggests a three-quarters rapture as it proposes that the church will be raptured at the seventh trumpet. However, there are two significant issues with this perspective. Firstly, this view misunderstands the significance of the last trumpet. It mistakenly identifies the seventh trumpet in Revelation, double 115, as the same trumpet mentioned in 1 Thessalonians 4.16, and referred to as the last trumpet in 1 Corinthians 1552. However, this overlooks the fact that Matthew 24, 30, 31 describes another trumpet sounding at the second coming of Christ, which occurs at the end of the tribulation, not in the middle. Therefore, the seventh trumpet in Revelation 11, 15 cannot be the last trumpet. This presents a significant problem for the pre-wrath view. Secondly, this perspective inaccurately understands when God's wrath is unleashed. It suggests that God's wrath begins to be poured out in the middle of the tribulation, based on the occurrence of the word wrath in Revelation 11. 18, shortly after the seventh trumpet. However, it fails to recognize that God's wrath commences at the beginning of the tribulation, as explained in the mid-tribulational rapture view. This misunderstanding arises from overlooking the significance of events, such as the signing of the peace treaty by the Antichrist, which initiates God's judgment on Israel. Therefore, the pre-wrath tribulation rapture view is flawed due to its incorrect understanding of the last trumpet and the timing of God's wrath. Post-tribulational rapture view, the fourth and final perspective on the rapture's timing is known as the post-tribulational rapture view. This view suggests that the rapture will occur at the end of the tribulation period after believers have endured the trials and challenges of that time. According to this view, every believer will be raptured and then immediately return to earth. However, there are several significant problems with this perspective. The lack of purpose for the rapture is one major issue. The problem with this view is that if believers are immediately returning to earth, there seems to be little purpose for the rapture event itself. It raises questions about why such a dramatic event would occur if believers are not being permanently removed from earthly trials. Another is the absence of mortals in the kingdom. A more serious problem is that if this view is accurate, it would mean that no mortal individuals would inhabit the millennial kingdom. Since the rapture would remove all believers from earth, leaving only those with immortal bodies, and the sheep and goat judgment would remove all unbelievers, the kingdom would consist solely of angels and immortal believers. This contradicts the prophecy of Isaiah 65, 17, 25, which speaks of children being born and people living to old age during the millennial reign of Christ. Also, there's an inability for post-kingdom rebellion. If only angels and immortal Christians populate the millennial kingdom, as suggested by this view. There would be no unbelievers present to rebel at the kingdom's end, as described in Revelation 27. 10. However, this rebellion is a crucial aspect of end times prophecy and would require the presence of unbelievers in the kingdom. Misinterpretation of the last trumpet is next in line. This view mistakenly identifies the last trumpet mentioned in 52 as the trumpet at Christ's second coming. However, this overlooks other trumpets described in Scripture, such as the trumpet sounding at the second coming of Christ in Matthew 24, 30, 31. Insufficient time for John 14 to 1 to 3, which suggests that the timeline proposed by the post-tribulational rapture view does not allow enough time for believers to dwell with Christ in heaven, as described in John 1, 4, 1 to 3, between the rapture and the second coming. What's with discrepancies between rapture and second coming events? There are notable differences between the events described in passages about the rapture, e.g. 1 Thessalonians 4. 13. 
18 and those about Christ's second coming, E, G, Revelation 19, 11, 21. These differences raise questions about whether they can be reconciled within the post-tribulational framework. Lastly, there is a lack of time for the Bema Seed Judgment. According to 5, the Bema Seed Judgment occurs after the rapture. However, the post-tribulational rapture view does not allow sufficient time for this judgment to take place between the rapture and Christ's second coming. Postmillennialism. Postmillennialists believe that the millennium is not a literal thousand-year period, but rather an indefinitely long time. They anticipate that the world will gradually become Christianized, leading to a period of righteousness and peace known as the millennium, during which Christ will return. Postmillennialists typically regard the rapture of the church and the second coming of Christ as the same event. They also believe that the Great Tribulation prophesied in the Bible was fulfilled during the Jewish-Roman War of 66 to 73 AD, culminating in the destruction of Jerusalem. Notable supporters of this view include John Bunyan, Jonathan Edwards, and Charles Finney. A millennialism, a millennialists understand the millennial rule of Christ as the current indefinite period that began with the establishment of the church and will end with Christ's second coming. They see the church age as Christ's kingdom already established. Though not yet fully realized until his return, this perspective rejects a literal interpretation of the thousand-year period mentioned in Revelation, viewing the number thousand as symbolic of the current age of the church. Amillennialists do not commonly use the term rapture, but believe in a similar event occurring at the second coming, described as a mystical gathering with Christ. They believe that the final days began on the day of Pentecost, and that the Great Tribulation will happen during the conclusion of the millennium, with Christ returning as the Alpha and Omega at the end of time. Unlike premillennialists who anticipate a literal thousand-year reign of Christ after his return, our millennialists stress the continuity and permanency of his reign throughout all periods of the New Covenant. They interpret mentions of Jerusalem in Revelation 21 as referring to a future New Jerusalem, not the present city, and do not see the rebuilding of the temple in Jerusalem as necessary or legitimate. Notable supporters of the amillennialist view include St. Augustine, the Catholic, Eastern Orthodox, and Anglican churches and various Protestant denominations hold this perspective. Signs showing rapture is near. The passage you've mentioned is from Matthew 8, where Jesus provides some signs that indicate the approach of the end times. These signs include false messiahs, wars, famines, earthquakes, and other natural disasters. However, Jesus also warns that these events are only the beginning of birth pains and the end is still to come. It's essential to approach the interpretation of these signs with discernment. While some events may seem to signal the approach of the last days, they do not necessarily mean that the end times have arrived. In 1 Timothy 4, 1, the Apostle Paul warned about an increase in false teaching during the last days, indicating that spiritual deception would be prevalent. Some interpreters look for other potential signs of the end times, such as the rebuilding of a Jewish temple in Jerusalem increased hostility toward Israel, and movements toward a one-world government. The existence of the nation of Israel is often considered a significant sign, as its establishment in 1948 fulfilled biblical prophecies regarding the restoration of Israel. It's important to approach the interpretation of these signs with humility and a recognition that God's timing is not always aligned with our expectations. While we are called to be watchful and prepared for the Lord's return, we should avoid overly speculative or dogmatic predictions about specific events signaling the imminent arrival of the end times. Ultimately, Christians are encouraged to be discerning, grounded in Scripture, and ready for Christ's return, echoing the sentiment expressed in Revelation 220, Come, Lord Jesus. How to endure rapture so the focus is on how believers should respond and live in anticipation of Jesus' return and the fulfillment of the kingdom of heaven on earth. Firstly, be alert, not alarmed. Recognize that deception will be prevalent, but stay grounded in God's word and the teachings of Jesus. Instead of panicking, find hope in Christ 
and his teachings by reading the Gospels regularly. Next, be obedient. Understand that you have a specific purpose and calling in your life, whether it's in your family, workplace, school, or elsewhere. Use your unique abilities and the guidance of the Holy Spirit to serve others and bring glory to God. And lastly, rest in the hope of Jesus' return. Despite the turmoil in the world, find peace and hope in the promise of Jesus' return. Pray for God's peace when feeling anxious and carry this message of peace and hope to those around you. So that's all about the rapture timing to happen in 2024. What do you think of it? Comment below and subscribe for more.